Hi beautifuls, Hannah here from Reality Awareness. Welcome to part three of this impromptu, unexpected three-part video series that I have been doing over this past uh, week, over these past few days. So this one is the lashing out, the reacting, why does this keep happening in relationships? And this is like breaking the patterns. This is like um, what shifted, how it shifts, why it's even there, how to heal it. And this is definitely a follow on from the past three videos that I have done, past two videos, this is number three. Uh, however, you don't need to have watched the first two to understand what I'm about to talk about on this video now. Uh, however, if you haven't watched the previous two videos, part one and part two, they're not even labeled that. It just started like, I think it was like halfway through part, through part two, the second video I was like, I think there's like a third part to this because the second video ended up being a, you know, a follow on from the first one without of it meaning like without it meaning to. So, so we're going to talk about that today. So let me share this a live stream as I always do and bring up the comments here so we can um, jump right in to this live stream that uh, this is a big one and I'm actually nervous about it and I just remembered something else I want to talk about it. I knew I knew I wrote it down the other day and I didn't remember what my notes were that I wrote down. I was like, what did I mean by that? I had to like go and replay the last bit of the video and now I just uh, remembered. So just going to make sure I just take notes when I make sure I want to talk about something. It's really important, right? So um, let me just share this. So while you're waiting for me to share this, uh, let me know where you're from around the world. Let me know if this is the first time to my live stream or whether you are new here or whether you've been here for a while. I mean, of course, it's going to be your first time if it's your first live stream and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Just going to pull this out of here. Auckland, New Zealand. Ah, Mel says, finding these lives so interesting, learning a lot. Yeah, thank you for that. Love my live videos. Thank you, Aubrey. Ah, I know one of my clients is down in Aubrey. Been loving my live streams. Thank you. Hi, Madeline. Hi, Kylie. Lovely to have you guys here. That's exciting. So awesome. All right. One more share and we are good to go. Making sure I'm putting it in the correct place. Okay. Love my energy and wisdom. Oh, thank you guys. Can I tell you about my tattoos? Do you know what? I've done an entire live stream about my tattoos because there's a story for each of them. <laughs> so we can send you the video for that if you would like. Um, Madeline says, I was just watching some of the Trust Intuition videos, but your live is more fantastic. Yes! So exciting that you're in there. I've been working on the booklet um, for it. I'm actually getting it printed this year. So we've got our own special like proper book. I'm so excited about that for 2022. So trust the intuition doors are open. We start on the magical date of the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. That came to me like way back in October. It was like the 22nd. I was like, well, what day is that? You know, am I starting on a Sunday? It was like a Tuesday. So anyway, trust intuition is open. And what we dive into in trust intuition, it was interesting because when I put the title of this live stream on, yeah, which is, let me just bring it up again because it's not on the top of that. So lashing out, reacting, why does this keep happening in relationships, breaking patterns and what shifted, how, why does it happen, etc. And as I press live, what actually came to mind is like, you know, the basis of understanding your intuition, healing your intuition, growing your intuition, being more psychic, whatever it is, right, is really understanding relationships. Like at its core, it's what it is. Why? Because every, we are in relationship to everything, right? We are in relationship to everything. You have a relationship to me, you have a relationship to your partner, you have a relationship to your family, you have a relationship to your phone, you have a relationship to 
your the way you exercise you have a relationship to what you see on tv if you even watch tv like you have a relationship to everything we are relating to everything now in trust intuition one of the bonuses that i've put in there is actually the third eye chakra consciousness so in rapid ascension awakening is the all the advanced trainings and when i created the third eye chakra consciousness i was like this has to go in trust intuition and it's it's all about relationships of course it's about past lives and mediumship and you know all different like relationship dynamics like relating to the third eye because that's the third eye chakra consciousness but it's all about relationships and it's a bonus in trust intuition because when you understand physical relationships it takes your intuition skyrockets to the next level because understanding energy you know when we, when we think about our intuition when we think about you know why well, i just got a message what does it mean it's like well what's your relationship to that message you know and there's so many different depths of layers within that but you have to have this understanding of your own intuition of your own understanding of all the pieces to even like understand your intuition of what it's talking about right now when we look at the relationship side of things this lashing out reacting why does this keep happening in relationships what i want to talk about on this live stream today is literally um you know like at the end of our last live stream there was a man who bravely said that you know i used to do that lashing out or i think he said it you know and i'm like well we've all been there and i think we come to a understanding of it once we've been through it, you know, I think that, you know, some people just not like that and that's totally okay. Like there's nothing wrong with it, but there's a lot of us who do lash out. There's a lot of us who don't know how to communicate our needs in a relationship. And that causes for the relate, um, for the relationship breakdowns. Like, you know, I always say, you know, like the number one thing to um, like to grow a relationship is communication. Like you have to understand how to communicate with a person, but not only that, you have to understand yourself. You have to understand your own needs and a lot of society, does not know that. You ask someone what they want, and they're like, I don't know, whatever you want, right? Because we're taught as a society to not want. Like this goes deep. And again, this is why I always say inner child healing will heal a lot of things, right? I'm just gonna bring these comments back up here. Uh, so when we look at, you know, understanding the dynamics of the relationships, yeah? Like I said in the last live stream, we were talking about the feminine and the abandonment, right? Um, Mel says, how do you do this with your children? So keep an eye out. I'm going to post, like, as you guys know, um, through January 2022. Yes, that's right. I almost said 2020. I was like, hang on, it's 22. Through January 2022, I'm posting the best of the best of my best of my best blogs, um, videos, live streams all over January because of the um, attack. And I'm still like, I wrote that one this morning on my phone. I was like, oh, this thumb's coming back, which was awesome. Um, but I'm still not up. Like I've, I was, I've, been, I've been trying, trust me, I've been trying. And I'm like, oh, still not there yet. You know, no, my finger's got a, a fucking long way to go. Anyway, the point is, um, is keep an eye out. This week, I'm going to post a lot of parenting um, blogs because I do have quite a few of them I have um, even done some uh, live streams on parenting as well there is a section on my website about it I've been aware parenting my daughter since she was three months old I've been I was heavily involved in the aware parenting community through you know like especially the first few years of her life and then I was teaching conscious parenting play groups um, when she was uh, 18 months old uh, running a mums and bubs yoga and then running a conscious play group after conscious parenting play group afterwards so I do have a lot of experience in it. Um, I've been around a lot of people. I'm connected with a lot of people who are aware parents and have raised their children like that as well. So I feel for me personally, understanding, again, it's, it's a style of communication. It's, it's a language. And as someone had posted on my page, you know, they said a lot, someone like they don't know how to communicate their needs. And I was like, yeah, exactly. It's learning another language. When we understand ourselves and understand what we need, we're understanding a different language, right? So, uh, okay, so where was I going with that? I got distracted about the children because it's really important about the children, right? So, okay, so the lashing out, okay. So in the last live stream, we were talking a little bit, a lot actually, I'm gonna a little bit talk about it now. We were talking about the abandonment. It was the feminine betrayal, abandonment, gossiping, and what it actually was and is, is the breakdown of our outer masculine shell and the abandonment that we've, you know, protected our inner feminine, right? Whether you're male or female, you can flip it around. You've got this hard shell or, or opposite, right? 
And it's like the, the woman is, you know, the inner feminine is protected for sure, but she's also blocked out from the world. She's, um, you know, she's abandoned, she's isolated. She's, you know, being put in a dungeon, if you may, right? And so then it's like the, the lashing out comes because we're holding everyone at arm's length and we've got these walls up and we don't know how to communicate because I'm going to get hurt again. And I'm not going, no, like what last time I used my voice, I got hurt and shut down. So I'm not going to do that again, right? So when we drop into this, um, so uh, like I'm just looking at my notes here as a talking, just wondering where to go, where to go from from this. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the thing that's dropping in, of course, because I, like I said on the last live stream, I've been speaking about this, um, been speaking about this with my clients this week. Hence being able to like I was like I feel like I need to talk about this publicly because I have spoken about this many times with my clients but this week it's been like in my face and I'm like okay there's something here with this so a little bit of history um just so you've got that sort of perspective so I was in a relationship for five years on and off the last three years like the first two years were hell it was that lashing out fighting it's all your problem. Like it was like I was the one with all the problems. Apparently, um, you know, and, you know, it was all it was all me. There's nothing wrong on the other side. It was all me. I was like, okay, cool. Eventually, I was like, okay, I better look at that. And so the next three years, the last three years of that relationship, I was like solid in counseling, like you know, and not just like uh, I would say not traditional counseling. Like my mentor at the time, she was like what's the highest degree in like psychology? She had like a master's in degree like in psychology. She's done it for like, is it six years at uni? Whatever. And, and I knew her from the original training when I was a master lab like a practitioner. We did the same training together in 2005. That's how I knew her. She went on to university and she was like the best counselor for me. So, and I did like many sessions with her, like just sitting there facing my stuff because it was all my fault. And, and fair enough, I had a lot of issues, right? And I worked through a bucket load. Now, that whole experience woke me up. It woke me up to so many things, as bad times do, right? The biggest piece about it is that, you know, cut a long story short, is that at the end of that five years, the cutoff for me was that, you know, he turned around and said, I don't think that I love this Hannah anymore. Because I know it. I knew that I'd shifted. I could feel it. I was a different person. I wasn't who I used to be, right? I could feel it. And that was after like a good solid three years, like especially that first year and then the second year and then the third year was, you know, I didn't do as much then, but um, I was still seeing, you know, my mentor. And and I knew that I'd shifted. I, I felt different. I was attracting different relationships. It was just different vibe, right? And anyway, so of course, you know, we'd catch up every now and again. And, and he's like, I don't know that I love this new Hannah. And I was like, what, 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 you know, like, and you know, and I was like, what do you mean? Like for me, I was just like, all this time you told me there was this person, there's this person inside of you and, and you know, she's amazing, but it's just, you know, it's tucked away inside. And so it was like, I'd flipped the like thing where like, that beautiful hearted person had come out and I, I became that person rather than the shell and the trauma and, and that big hard masculine shell. Like that was the flip. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't need to have that wall up anymore. That was the reactive, you know, like wall like that. Does that make sense? And so that was the cutoff for me. Now, there's a reason I'm sharing that because then, you know, fast forward, mm, I think it was about a year. I was seeing this other guy, so I was dating. Uh, it was a long distance relationship and it was such an eye opener for me. And honestly, it, it changed something in me. It did. Maybe it solidified the shifts that I had had about it. Maybe it like, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how to describe it, okay? But I'm gonna tell you what happened. So one afternoon, and I remember it so clearly, and I was just telling my client about this the other day, I was like, one afternoon, I was sitting on my bed, so at my old place, and you know, I was in a really good place. My business after two and a half years at that point in time had finally, I could feel it had its own momentum, the turning up, blogging and live stream day in, day out, doing what I do, like sharing my heart and soul, like doing all the things and helping and serving and blah, blah, blah. Like I, for two and a half years, I felt it had started, it had picked up its own momentum. And I was like, okay, I've broken through something. I've, I've made it, if you may, right? 
and I was in a very good place and I've learned to take lots of mini breaks right so you know if you saw my post earlier on this morning um, on my page you know like I was working I woke up at 2 38 this morning with a dream and the dream woke me up and as I was like sort of half laying there because the dream really like woke me up and I'm like trying I'm deciphering it and I'm like trying to go back to sleep as well because I don't want to get up now the sun hadn't come up and I'm like hang on like you know and then I was like I'm not going back to sleep <laughs> like right, obviously and then by 3 30 I was like no nah, I'm just gonna get up and work which I've done many many times over this um you know over this thing right so over this building my business and it's a dedication it's a commitment yeah and there's always time so I've been up since 2 30 this morning right and I've the way that I can continue working like this like it's like four o'clock in the afternoon now was I had a half an hour meditation mini nap earlier today um, and over the years I've learned to talk, take lots of mini breaks and that's like the beauty of working for yourself is that you can it's your own schedule right if I need to I work at the beach you guys have seen my videos with that as well so that's the thing about freedom right we create a lifestyle that we want that we love and that we want to live but not everybody has the courage the balls the consistency to stick the course and make it happen right so interest intuition by the way I talk about all of this and how to become the healer and actually create the freedom and do all those things yeah there's a lot of people that start and stop there's a lot of people that don't have the courage there's a lot of people that are too worried about what Vivian says you know about my spiritual stuff I mean like come on I got a tattoo on my head do you know how confronting that was and what I was like expecting from other people and trust me it came like do, are they are they gonna be on my deathbed like are they gonna be next to me on my deathbed do I really care about what they think no I've got a purpose to live I've got shit to do all right, so the point is, is that mini breaks are important. And I remember this so clear because I was having a mini break on my bed this afternoon. And not today, back then, right? And the guy that I was dating started messaging me. And it was weird. Like, and the reason that I remember it so clear as day is because it woke me up to a pattern. I had dawning realizations about it and something shifted. And he was like messaging and it was like, you know, it was like, hi, or like, I don't remember what it was about right now, right? But it was like, you know, started off as a message does. And, and then it was like, it kept going and it was like this like prodding or poking and it just kept going. And, and I was like, what, what is this? Like, you know, I was just like, I was like, where, where, where's this coming from? Like, you know, and this is all text. I was like, you know, would you like to have a, um, would you like to have a conversation? You know, like I can, I can call, like I'm on a break, you know, I can call and, you know, we can, we can connect, like, you know, and, and, for, and he, he didn't, he just like kept going and going and going and going, going and, you know, obviously he had stuff going on, whatever, but for me, like what ended up happening, and I don't remember if it was that point, but you know, like what I realized, okay, and this is so important when people are like the lashing out, the all of that, is that what I realized in that moment is that particular person that I was with, um, his mother, his mother would always yell at him. His mother would always, like the form of communication in the household was yelling and screaming and abuse. Like that was all there was. And so he grew up with the brain chemistry, rewiring, um, you know, understanding that that equ equated love. Now, this is a huge like thing where people are like oh they're narcissists and they're blah 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 now yeah narcissistic behavior is awesome for labeling the piece okay but when we you know like when we understand where the narcissistic behavior stems from it's not that we tolerate abuse no way but it's that we start to understand deeper rather than like are oh, they just narcissistic and blah 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 now you have to ask what's your part in that too yeah, this is where the, the fingers back itself always, okay? But when we can understand, you know, like that was a huge wake up for me. Like he kept prodding and prodding and, and because he prod enough, then I would react. At that point on the bed, I didn't react that day because I was in a really good place. I was like, well, you know, I just told you the story, right? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, you know, and Cody, and it was just like, yeah, like, 
and and I was just like, wow, like, and that was the dawning realization because every other time I would react, it would get to a point and I'd be prodded and prodded and then it was just like reaction or, you know, and it became apparent over these few months that we were dating, it was like this thing and I, because I, I understood, I understood that it was a connection. I was like, oh, we haven't spoken for a bit, like, would you like to have a call? We can connect because that's what he wanted is connection, but he didn't know how to connect in a healthy way, he had to create a fight for that connection. Now, a lot of relationships are out there like this, you know, like the kiss, the, the fighting and makeup sex. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that cyclic pattern is toxic and unhealthy, but it's because of the way society, not the mum, not the dad, not the sister, like, well, maybe it's the system actually, but you know, like society has been trained that way. The way we've grown up, like you only have to watch the news. You only have to turn on the TV to see how many drama shows there is. Like, you know, like Home and Away. I don't know if you guys have Home and Away in, in uh, out of Australia. Um, I don't watch it anymore. But when I was growing up as a kid, I would watch Home and Away. It was like at 7, 7 p.m. every night, right? Monday to Friday night. It was like a thing. We'd all have family dinner and watch Home and Away. Like, you know, I always remember it as a kid. And... Um, I think years later, like, I, you know, it was over the east coast of Australia by then. I was probably in my early 20s and, you know, I hadn't watched TV for ages because when I had my spiritual awakening, I stopped watching the news and didn't have a telly. And I was like, I don't care. Like, I didn't need it, you know. Um, I was high on life after I got off drugs and stuff and my spiritual awakening. But And then, like, I think wherever I had TV or whatever, at one point I was like, well, whatever happened home and away? Maybe I should just watch it. And honestly, it was just, like, toxic, unhealthy relationship shit like just cycling and I'm just like wow like look at the, I was just like wow I was watching that as a kid like this is normal this is what we're programmed of normal for love Jason says we have to control our ego yes yeah, so I don't believe in that mm -mm -mm. like you know a lot of people say that number one we can't control anything not even our ego number two our ego is our human self right? And our soul is our spiritual self. They're connected. They're important. We're going to hate on your ego. We don't control our human self. We understand our human self. Relationships, understanding. Again, this is why I put the advanced third eye chakra consciousness, advanced relationship healing in trust intuition as a bonus because it's understanding the relationship dynamics that you have with yourself. Hence part two of this um, video series that we did couple of days ago so you can watch that on the feminine betrayal right and the gossiping is the relationship with yourself right and it's not about the ego this is about understanding the dynamics of the relationship within yourself and what we're being programmed and what you grew up in for me I grew up in um you know like yelling as a form of communication as well right so that's why we were a, a match originally Right, we were a match originally because we both grew up in that yelling uh, uh, household. That was a normal way of communicating. So of course we're as an energetic match. Why? Because we're not only programmed through everything we watch on TV, etc., etc. Right, but we're also programmed. Um, I want to say like by a genetic thing, but I don't believe that we're stuck in that. We can unprogram everything. Right, um, reprogram everything. Um, boot up the software, you know, like reboot the software with new software, basically, right? This is literally what we can do. But it's about, if you really want to shift this pattern, and if you're at this point, because there's a lot of people that I know that are at this point of realizing that the relationship that they are in, the way, you know, like they want a healthy relationship and healthy communication, but there's fighting happening or there's prodding or there's miscommunication. And it's like, you are not. we just agreed on this thing and now you're going back on that and you don't even realize that you just went back on that and you're like prodding me for this reaction that is like the love, like that, that doesn't make sense. If you want to shift the unhealthy relationship patterns, you need to rewire your brain, your neural pathways, your body physiology and chemistry of the um uh, like fighting equals love now every healthy relationship has hard times and miscommunications but i'm talking about the abusive you know yelling screaming as a normal way of living 
the put downs, the sarcasm, like all of that is not normal, but we're attracted to that or we're attracted to the bad boys because that's what we've been programmed in, not only from, as I said, like growing up through, you know, school and society and all that sort of thing, but also what we grew up in, in our own household system. So if you understand and look at what, you know, like how your parents relating back when you were a child, what was normal communication, what was around, and then how does that reflect in your own current relationships? Yeah. So it is about this, you know, like rewiring of your brain chemistry and rewiring and repatterning of your entire like physiology, physiology, physiology makeup, right? Because we've got this chemistry attraction, right? The ones that we're like instantly chemistry attracted to, like, you know, it's like, yeah, but is there everything else that ticks off or is it only the sex? If it's only the sex, you want to be mindful of those relationships because everything else, like, it'll just be like, oh, yeah, it's a compromise. Like, yeah, no, you don't need to compromise in relationship, not on your values and not on your belief systems. Mm -mm. The sex might be great, might be great company, but is anything else align? No. And if that's the case, that's where you need to even understand for yourself what, what, I don't know if real love is the right word, what healthy love is, is like. Because for me, the biggest wake up as well over those years of all that, you know, stuff that I dived into and that five years of going, you know, three years going through that was the breaking of my sex addiction and the breaking of that sex equals love. Because I also grew up around situations where there was a lot of porn magazines and just, you know, just stuff like that, that, you know, it created a certain understanding of what love is. And that was a big wake up for me. That was a big wake up and a shake up. That it's like, you know, the only way to feel love is sex. And when you have that chemistry running, you're going to run into the unhealthy relationships. So it's like repatterning also what it is that is attractive to you. And that takes time. This has taken me years to repattern this stuff. It doesn't happen overnight. But when you start becoming aware of it, it comes blatantly obvious. And it's a hard pill to swallow. But the other thing is, like, how do you connect? How is, you know, how do you feel loved and nurtured? How, you know, that only comes from you understanding yourself, not experiencing, oh, a healthy love taught me this. Like, no, we teach ourselves healthy love. Over the years, I, I never had, like, growing up, I never had healthy role models of, of healthy conscious relationships is what I'm speaking about. And I always knew deep down that I wanted a, a conscious, healthy relationship. But I never had a role model. I never, I never knew what that was. I was wired for the unhealthy. So if you're in that space, it's also putting yourself around people who are in healthy, conscious relationships, right? Now, if you can't do that in person, there's ways to do that online. There's plenty of them out there. Conscious, healthy relationships. Follow them. Listen to them. Jump on their live streams. Jump on their podcasts. Like whatever it is. Like absorb them talked about this absorbing in the last live stream, right? In the part two of this, yeah? So really understanding and shifting that pattern is shifting what it means to feel loved for you. Like I said, you might be clear about that. You might be at that stage where you're like, you know, and, and there's also a, a stage as if you may, like I said, you might be like waking up to like, wow, yeah, this is, this is this, fighting for love connection is literally fighting for love. Maybe in the household, it was fighting for love, like literally, you know, but it's also, we don't know what that is. And again, it's nothing bad or wrong. It's a societal, you know, illness, if you may, right? And we're shifting that by starting to understand what it is that, you know, we're like, okay, I'm still attracted to that, but I also know that's not good for me, right? And then you're starting to shift away from it and you might, you know, meet healthy people and you're like, oh, but I'm not attracted to that. And you sort of fall back here because brain, body chemistry, you're still in this space energetically, right? But as you continue doing the work and as you continue, you know, doing the stuff and all this shifts, you know, this is what we dive into in trust intuition and the advanced relationship stuff, right? It's all in there. We start on the 22nd of February. The link is on my page or my website. You can send me a message. It's also in the title of this live stream. You know, it's like we still, when we, you know, we shift, we come over into this space and we're like, you know, this is the healthy, like we know this is healthy and maybe we're not so much attracted to that anymore, but we're not so attracted to this either. But what we're actually doing is we're rewriting and understanding what, it, what is healthy for me and what does fill me up and what does soul nurture me and what does do all these things, 
right? Like there is that space where you're just like in almost in a limbo. It's like, ah, not that, but definitely not that either. I know that now and I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit repulsed by that. Right, and it's not that you wanted that repulsion there forever, it's just, you know, that is part of that process of change with it as well. And then you sort of come into this healthy love and you're like, oh, this is, this is, this is what I've been working for actually. And sometimes people might come along and test you, right? You know, like, it's like, oh, but, uh, and then you're just like, no. And then you hold your boundaries, you hold your boundaries and then you're over here. And you're not repulsed by that anymore, but you definitely know your journey and you're like, yeah, I'm just, just you have a, uh, a, what is it, a non, there's no reaction like there's no repulsion or there's no attraction it's just it's neutral that's the word that's when you know you've shifted right the other part as well that I wanted to speak about is that you know for me in the shifting of the mothering is that you know like that whole thing of like learning to mother yourself right and this is stemming on from part two so if you haven't watched that part two live stream that I did the other day the feminine betrayal the gossiping the backstabbing this is like part three that was part two I go into that more but it's also learning to mother yourself right as a society we're taught to not mother ourselves we're taught to not care for ourselves we're taught to sit down in school sit down for six hours more a day for 12 longer years right to you know, do as we're told in the patriarchal structured masculine system. Like we're not taught, we're taught to do everything and do this many things to then be good enough at something, you know, like all these patterning plays a part in the relationships as well. Right. And we're not taught to look after ourselves. you know, like the biggest thing in trusting intuition is being, is knowing how to take care of your intuition, knowing how to take care of your energy, knowing what your boundaries are, knowing yourself, knowing all those things and stop putting other people first. Right. It's a really big shift. What else is there? So breaking the pattern and that's how we break the pattern. Yeah. Um, you have to remember as well, when you start feeling and healing this stuff, it'll feel like it's never ending, right? If you're starting to break these patterns, as I spoke about in the first live stream, I think, or even in the second one, I'm getting confused now, but I think it was the second one actually. I spoke about the 18 month healing cycle. If you start this journey, know that there's about an 18 month window, if you may, that is like, you're going to dive into the depths of it. It's going to feel like it's never ending. You're going to be like, why did I start this healing of this thing, right? It's just like, it'll feel like walking through mud. That's why it's good to work with a mentor such as myself or be in trust intuition. Like we're all walking through that, if you may, and a lot of us are already, you know, there. And it's like moving through that sludge requires work. It requires looking at yourself so ever deeply but that's the process of remothering yourself, understanding your needs, who you are, and you can't do energy work without that. Well, you can, but you're not going to be clear. You're going to be cloudy. You're going to be messy. It's going to be draining. It's going to blah, 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 right? It's a process. You can do anything without doing anything, by the way, but you're going to be a bit foggy and cloudy and all those things. So does anyone have any questions about um, what I just shared with that? Because I know it's pretty deep as well and the rewiring and the repatterning is is a big deal yeah and and sometimes you might be like oh yeah but i'm not really sure what you're talking about and then like in the next three months you'll experience that and you'll be like oh fuck this is what she's talking about <laughs> got it but i must be experiencing it because i'm shifting it now <laughs> right all right Brendan says, I love the way you are one with the earth and putting your feet on the ground to feel what's going on and being at peace yes i think it's important for everyone hi Alison. so lovely to see you I look for any live vids I missed today, so maybe it was my intuition saying you'll be back. Yes, trust that. <laughs> trust that so much. Uh, Mel says, so much I want to ask, but I don't really want to get into it on here. Okay, so you can always um, post in my Reality Awareness Support Group as well. It's a private group. So yes, this is public, of course. So yeah, you're probably conscious of that. Um, it is a private support group. It's free. It's the Reality Awareness Support Group. Only people who are in that group obviously see the conversation that goes on in there. So you're more than welcome to post it in there. With Trust Intuition as well, guys, um, like I said, we start on the 22nd of February. It's a six-month training, okay, but there's also a lot of support from myself and my team. So I get in there once a month on hot seat mentoring. Um, so basically, we've got one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but in the group setting on Zoom. Um, so you can get that one-on-one -on -one support with me with, you know, and it's it's talking about whatever, because trusting your intuition and your life purpose involves the entire thing. So it's really working at, you know, like nothing is off topic when we step into that space. 
There's also my team who do two live streams a month, their support calls to ask exactly the same thing, anything at all, um, or you know, just receive intuitive guidance or whatever it is turning up on those calls. So there's three support calls a month in the group, plus the trainings that we do working through trust and intuition. So there is ways to receive support. Um, so Madeline says, I'm adapting to some things now. I'm, I sometimes feel in, in, in an awkward or realization space because I go to look for someone to tell me what to do. Then I remember, oh, Maddie, you chose it all. You choose it all. Exactly, right? And that's the thing about trusting intuition as well. We do do that. And then we, you know, we get stronger. And I was also talking to another client about this yesterday as well, or two days ago. Um, you know, it's like we can freak out because we're like, oh, we're, you know, like we're looking out there, we're looking out there. But then we realize that, you know, we, we become stronger at not looking out there. And that's also a process. That's a process of trusting intuition. Yeah. So, you know, and it's interesting when we catch ourselves like that too. So it's also that you're catching yourself too. Gary says, home and away. I had to watch it growing up too. It would have to be the most dangerous town if it was real. I know, right? Like, what are they feeding us? Like, prime time, television time. Everyone's eating as well. So we're eating that energy and ingesting it. Like, oh, fuck. Give me, give me strength. <laughs> Tracy, yes. Putting a stop to it needed to be reminded. You're so welcome. Jason says, most relationships are not honest. I know, right? And this is the thing where I was not settling for that. I was like, no. Nah. And you know, and he says, Jason says, if you lie once, don't admit it. And then you go on to follow this pattern. You are lying to yourself and the person you're with. Do you know what? The number one step, the divine step, number one to awakening your life purposes, 12 of them. The first step is honesty. If you want clear, accurate intuition and psychic development and growth and understanding everything, honesty is the number one freaking step. That means lying, white lies. It's like a cloud that clouds you. It's like a big like thunderstorm sitting here. And you can imagine how many times you've lied to yourself, to other people, white lies. Like, you know, even stealing the grape in the shop just to try it. Like, you know, we don't think it's stealing, but it actually is. Like, that's, that's integrity. That's honesty. Like, you know what I mean? That's lying. Do you know what I mean? Like, those little things will cloud your intuition. Number one step to clear intuition, be honest. And I think that's why, you know, a lot of people like, you know, I know my best friend has said to me, you're very like cutting to the truth. Like it's my, you know, my soul crystal up as Azuli, but it's like, it's this, um, oh, what's the word? Um, I can't remember exactly what she said. She didn't say blunt, but you know, it's like that. And, and she, cause she said to me, she's like, I don't, it's just the way you speak, but you know, and I was like, oh, that's my honesty. And, you know, I think that I feel confronting for a lot of people because I am honest, like, and I don't even realize it because I can't be any other way because I'm so clear that any, like, I can't lie. I cannot lie. And I, I don't like living out of integrity either. I get sick, you know, like, because if I live out of integrity, because it's a lie to my true self, it's a lie to who I really am. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's number one thing is honesty. And that's the thing, as you said, you know, like a lot of relationships are built on that and that's the sickness in society. It's the number one step. All right. And so if people don't like the truth, just look at the fucking current state of world affairs right now. Right. Yeah. 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 Violet can relate. I speak the truth. Yes. Yeah. Giving you a few things to think about. Awesome. Penny says, how to respond if it's a wound response? Okay, awesome, awesome question. Lying is habitual in our culture. I know, right? And that's the thing where, you know, that's why society is like it is. And that's why, um, you know, where, you know, like the current state of the world affairs. In 2020, I got the message that the world is not ready for this level of consciousness until 2027 because of these lies, etc. right? And it takes a lot to wake up out of that. By 2024, people will be like, <gasps> they'll be at the wake up stage of what we just talked about on this live stream of like, oh my God, this is wrong, but this form of connection or like this lie or, you know, like, but they won't also know what to do with that. And then it takes a few years, like anyone knows to leave a domestic violence relationship, it takes time. You don't just up and leave at the first thought of like, oh shit, this is bad, like some people do, but most of the time it's a gradual like preparing and getting ready and is it right, is it wrong, back and forth, like, you know, and then they'll snap and they'll be like, I'm done, right? That's what society's going through right now. So awesome question, uh, Penny. So how to respond if it's a wound response? 
So there's um, a uh, audio that I did about boundaries, um, and it, 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 I, in that audio I explain ways to speak, if you may, about how to respond, if it's a wound response, right? And the other thing is, is that when we are clear in our own wounds, right, this is a little bit of a fine line, but when we're clear in our own wounds, we usually can hold space for other people who are in that wound, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that we are perfect because <laughs> we've all got wounds and we've all got different layers of wounds. Anyone who says, I'm totally healed and I don't need to do any more work and I'm perfect now because I did my trauma work, like, you want to stay away from those people, <laughs> In my opinion, like, do you know what I mean? Like, everybody is evolving. No matter what level they are at, stuff will come up. No matter what layer it is, no matter, like, come on, like, let's be real here, right? Um, I'm just going to grab this link and pop it on your comment there. So number one is that boundaries thing, the, the audio that I'm just showing there for you. Um, the other piece about it is... Um, uh, Sorry, the cat distracted me because I'm usually walking them at this time, <laughs> dinner time, but he's gonna, they're going to have to wait. Um, so I just popped that boundaries link in. And uh, yeah, so how to respond if it's a wound response. That audio number one, it gives you great insight as to, you know, and, and the thing is, is that it's not about tolerating abuse. Uh -uh. And I explained that in that audio very deeply. Um, but it is, about, it is about having, sorry, there's... AirPods trying to connect. It must be my daughter's. Um, <laughs> getting all these distractions. Okay. Um, there has to be an understanding, right? How do you respond if it's a wound response? If you're with an unconscious person, that's a tricky space to be in. Um, now, it sounds judgmental if you're with an unconscious person, but it, as I explain on my live streams, it's a way to understand the energy and explaining it through labels. So bear with me. If you're with an unconscious person, it's, it's very tricky. You've got to have a lot of, um, I don't know if resilience is the right word. You've got to be in a good space yourself to be able to hold space for that. Again, it's not about tolerating abuse, but it is about putting those boundaries in place. If you're with a, a conscious person, if you may, there's an understanding, there's a communication. And hey, it can be an unconscious person and you have this communication understanding as well, right? There's a, um, it's not tag team, it's like a, it's, a, it's an agreement between you both about how you deal with conflict. It's an agreement and understanding of each other's needs in the relationship, of each other's love languages, like of getting to know each other. Now, that can be confronting because intimacy scares a lot of people and a lot of people don't know how to do it and here's the lying that comes back into it and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of relationships are built on that and people wonder why it's going wrong and then it just like, it's like look underneath to the original lie, you know, and see, see the core of it, if you may. So... It is a bit of a tricky one. Um, if you're in a wounded response, right? Like, you know, you know, we can lash out and stuff, but it, it's the, I want to say it's the follow up. So we can like, oh, I lashed out again. Oh, sorry, I won't do that again. You know, and then like next week you're doing the same thing or next month you're doing the same thing. Like you actually haven't dealt with your shit. Um, you know, and when you can catch yourself in those moments and actually like, oh, I'm really wounded. I'm really wounded. I'm really triggered right now. I honestly can't speak about this now because I'm, I'm just not in a good space. I need to come back to this place. Can we come back and talk about this on such and such a date? I really want to work on this relationship. This is important to me, but right now I need to deal with my own shit. Like, you know, it, you know that's how it should work, if you may. Um, but again, it depends on the person that you're dealing with in that situation. Hence, then the boundaries audio that I put in comes into play. Yeah. All right, so just checking this. People do not understand that. Yeah, exactly, right? Do I know the color of your aura? Um, probably if I tuned into it, but I encourage you to tune into that yourself, right? Practice yourself and tuning into that. So Nancy says, so I realize in this, this in the past few years, white line can be a hard habit to break for so many. Uh-huh, definitely, yep. Jason says the part, the people in charge are lying. It starts at the top. Yes, that's hence society being trained like that, right? Um, Nancy says, yes, we stop doing our work when we transition out of this life into the next. Yeah, yes and no. I feel like, um, you know, it's, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like, for, for me personally, I feel like we're always evolving and the work never stops. It's just different layers and levels of consciousness that we evolve through, if that makes sense, in my opinion. But yeah, 
Jason says, have you got a healthy relationship with the father of your daughter and is he a constant in her life? Yes, I do, actually. Um, it never started like that, though. <laughs> so um, currently she's 13. He lives in New Zealand. Um, he did live, you know, in the same state um, and until she was seven. And around when she was seven years of age, you know, things were going on for him. And he's like, I need to move back to New Zealand because that's where he was born. He's originally from there. He's like, how do you feel about that? Um, by that stage, we had a good relationship. Um, the first the first three to four years were really hard. Um, you know, co-parenting. I was, you know, on my own with her since uh, she was three months of age. And, you know, went to court, domestic violence orders. Um, he never physically hit me, by the way. It was all emotional. Um, you know, and I'm just pointing that out because like people are like, oh, you should be with someone who hits you. And I'm like, there was never that. It's all emotional abuse, the manipulation, etc. This was a, it was a very strong boundary. We talk about boundaries. That was a very strong boundary. How, we, how do we deal with a wounded person? And even myself at that point in time, I'm not perfect. It was a boundary. Yeah. Um, and it needed to happen. And many years later, he thanked me for it. You know, he, he was just like, you know, it, it did it. it. You know, it took time, of course. Um, but you know, by the time, you know, she was between four and seven, like, you know, even before then he was visiting her and, you know, he was having a four nights out of the fortnight, five nights out of the fortnight, like it was, you know, it was fine. We had everything in place and um, like parenting orders in place and that sort of thing. And it was, it was amicable. And then by the time she was seven, like I said, he moved back to New Zealand and she started flying over to New Zealand to see him instead of, you know, um, or he would fly over at times as well and spend time with her here. Um, and between seven and nine years of age, um, yeah, she was flying over, spending three to four weeks at a time. Um, we homeschool, so we were able to do that and be flexible like that. Um, and then COVID happened, and by the time she was 11, I think it was COVID, about then, 12, 10, 11. And so there's been a halt in that. Um, but yeah, very, yeah, we're very, um, yeah, we're. I don't know if it's healed, if that makes sense, but we we understand each other, um, you know, and relationships do heal. And I'm going to do another live stream on my relationships have healed and are healing. Relationships do heal because if a lot of you have been following me for many years, you'll hear, you've heard all about my journey through many relationships, even my family. And a client had mentioned to me um, before Christmas, you know, she's like, you know, asking about this because we're at a session and and she was asking me about it and um, she's like, what about your mom and stuff? And I was like, well, I was like, yeah, I've been speaking to her every day. And, and then I realized, I was like, oh, but I don't think many people know that. And she's like, no, like, you know, because she was, she's been in reality awareness from the start, right? And so she's seen the whole journey. And I was like, I better do a live stream about that because my relationships have actually healed, you know? And probably since I've been in this house, I've been speaking to my mom. So it's probably, what are we now? Um, so nearly nearly 18 months that I've been speaking to my mom. It's not every day, you know, she's on the other side of Australia, but you know, I'm like, the relationship feels like it's healed there. Um, you know, and so of a few other of my family relationships as well. And you know, like that's the journey we go through, right? And relationships do heal, but we need to put in boundaries and space to be able to even, you know, figure that stuff out. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, these are the strong boundaries, whether it's a court order or a cutoff of communication for a period of time or, you know, or never again, or you continue communicating and you continue having that space, but you've got really strong boundaries in place about how that works as you both heal. You know, like it's very variable. But again, this we go into depth in trust intuition and we go into this in the advanced third eye chakra consciousness, which is a bonus in trust intuition because you have to understand these relationship dynamics, where they come from, boundaries, you know, all the reasons why we don't hold boundaries, etc., etc., which comes back to this live stream about the rewiring of what it means to even love because if we're in that you know, we've grown up in that abuse or that yelling or screaming or the programming from shows or whatever it is that's rife. That's why the society is like it is, right? It's a, it's a rewiring of that. And until we're able to rewire what love means to us, we won't be able to put these boundaries in place because those boundaries, you know, feel like we're not getting love because we're so programmed to receive love through the fighting. Does that make sense? So it goes very deep. Yeah, um, and, and it's a process and trust intuition goes through this process. Yeah, so we start on the 22nd of February. Link is in the title of my live stream. It's in the, you know, you'll see it on my page, etc. as well. 
So yeah, it's definitely been a journey, but we do have a very amical, good relationship now for sure. Even, you know, when I would fly over to New Zealand, because, um, you know, in the start, she was seven, uh, people were like, just put her on a plane. I'm like, not international, sorry, she's my little girl. No, protective mama bear here. <laughs> um, so I would fly over with her, drop her off in Auckland, I'd get on the next flight home, come home, even though I wanted to keep going to Dubai, but at that point in time, I was unable to. Anyway, Emirates is best airline. The point is, is that, um, you know, like those trips that we did, the first time I went over there, like the first time she went over, I wanted to see like for a mama bear, like I just needed to see Auckland or see where she'd be or just needed to have my bearings on it, if you may. So, you know, flew over and I think even, I don't know, it was the second or third time and I'd missed the flight or flight was delayed or something had happened and I ended up staying at his house, you know, like separate bedrooms, there was nothing of that going on. It's just as as um, amical adult friends, like, do you know what I mean? Co-parenting our daughter. And for me, that was such a big, oh, that was such a big healing, if you may, you know, to, to finally get to that space where we could even do that. Do you know what I mean? After what we'd been through together. And I think even for my daughter to see that is very, very powerful, you know? So relationships do heal, it takes a fuckload of work. And, and not just about the other person, you're the problem. And I'm like, you know? I did, done a lot of work, right? Done a lot of work. Okay, just looking at these comments. Yes, you agree about evolving. Yes, we're evolving endlessly, never stops after life. It's just the beginning of a new chapter. Yes, I like to say a new book. <laughs> so Mel says, since I got divorced, I was only attracting guys who wanted sex for me and arrogant, um, from me and arrogant. But now I have set boundaries for myself and I've stopped accepting that and I'm not attracting anything. Yes, okay, so awesome for bringing that up. I went through a period, so you know that period I spoke about, right, where that that five-year relationship at that point, you know, and he's like, I don't think I love this Hannah anymore. And for me, that was, like I said, the biggest thing because I'd become the healthy person that was, like, inside that he kept pointing out, right? And it was such an interesting dynamic shift, right? It's interesting. Dynamics and relationships do change. So, you know, got to keep up. Um, so I set boundaries for myself, stopped accepting. Yeah. And so, I was just reminding myself what we're talking about. So, from that point, and like I said, it was about a year before I started dating that guy who, you know, was, you know, that I said about the fighting mum growing up. And that's why that connection was fighting. And, you know, as a love, that was the way he felt loved, right? Um, that period of time for me, I didn't sleep with anyone. And from a recovering sex addict, that's a big deal. You know, from codependent relationships, from for 13 maybe, all the way up to, you know, when I had my daughter, I guess, um, to, to, you know, and I didn't purposely abstain from sex, it just happened. I chose, put all my energy into my business and stuff and I realized after a period of time, I'm like, wow, that sex ranges. And at that time I was working with my mentor. Well, I had two mentors at that particular time. I've always had many mentors on the go because I wouldn't be where I am today without mentors. Uh-uh, <laughs> just, I need them. Um, so it's a personal growth evolution thing like I'm hungry for soul growth, right? In all different areas, business, soul, everything. Um, so relationships, the whole thing. But anyway, the point is, is that it came to a period of time and my mentor, is, you know, and I said something to her and she's like, oh, you should like, you know, welcome yourself back in with a ceremony or whatever. She said, you know, like I remember exactly. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of a good idea. You know, I had this big period of time where I hadn't been in a relationship. I hadn't even been having sex with anyone. There was nothing. And, you know, and so I did like a welcoming ceremony back in. Now, I don't know, I don't know if the welcoming ceremony is about that. I just made it up, right? And it's going to sound crazy. But, you know, what I did is I just, um, you know, like I got salt like out of my kitchen, like Celtic, Celtic sea salt, whatever. And like it's a whole bag. And I just like got, went into my bedroom and like shook it all over my bed, like all over the cupboards, like the whole bedroom was covered in salt. Don't ask me why, I just did it. Then I got the lavender oil and I just went and did the same, right? And then I welcomed myself back in, lit some candles and became sensual with myself, right? And it was my way of like, it was like an initiation. It was initiation out of the, um, you know, toxic, unhealthy, cyclic sex for love pattern. And it was a break from that because like I said, I'd abstained and I didn't even, you know, plan to, it just happened. And then 
welcoming me back in. It was very intentional. That ceremony for myself was very, very intentional. I was like, wow, yeah, I'm not going, you know. And, you know, she did mention some, you know, she's like, I know people who, you know, go like that and then they go and like have sex with all these people, you know, like, and she did something similar, but she didn't do that. But she was like very sacredly bringing herself back in. And I was like, yeah, that really resonates. And so I did something similar. Um, with, you know, well, I don't know what she did, but you know, that I did that ceremony with that intention because I was like, no, this is like the new Hannah. This is like, you know, like sex is really important to me in a relationship, like a hundred percent, but I'm very conscious of that brain rewire and repatterning about that sex equates love. Like this different, you know, like, no love is a different, you know, it's a part of love, but it's not the love. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I would like really recommend something like that, um, you know, whether you abstain for a period of time or not, I mean, I think that's irrelevant. Um, but when you say you're not attracting anything, like I went through a period of time, it would have been around that 18 month portal, you know, if not longer of just not even feeling attracted to anyone, you know, and like I said on this live stream, there's almost those three stages that I spoke about. And if you missed what I said about that, you might want to watch the replay and just sort of slow it down or replay that section. Um, you know, because it does take time to rewire this. So I have to remember, like I was like, what, 33, 34 going through this or 35, like around that age, you know, it's like I've had 33 years of unhealthy, toxic love and not knowing anything else, let alone experience it, only watching mentors and conscious couples and like absorbing everything that they do and being around them to understand what a healthy relationship is like. And now stepping into a place where I'm like, I won't settle for anything other than conscious, healthy love. Like it's, it's not a, it's not a it's a non-negotiable right um so yeah so something like that and trust me there's a lot of grieving that happens in that time like there's a lot of grief there's a lot of loneliness there's a lot of abandonment of self right so if you haven't watched the part two of this live stream which is the previous one that i did on the feminine betrayal um you know the backstabbing gossiping etc please go and watch that right because that will help to explain you know deeply what we're talking about here okay so hopefully that helps um, so Nancy says, hard to communicate totally on this platform, evolving always. Yes, yes, it is hard to communicate when you're typing. I know it's tricky. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And you're like trying to keep up. I know, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, but I understand the delay. That's why I'm conscious of going back through your comments. You need to trust your intuition. Yes, awesome. Um, I think that's why you're, I'm pretty sure you're in trust intuition, Tracy. Um, Jason says, I'm 52, have been single for 27 years and haven't, had sex for eight years and being honest what are your thoughts um i would definitely welcome yourself back in and i would open up to conscious healthy love um open-hearted love even don't you know it doesn't have to have a label like it's an open heart that's you know like don't shut yourself off is what i would say um but it starts with you and like reprogramming your sexual you know self begins with you too yeah um psychological emotional abuse is difficult yes it definitely is Oof, it is Michelle says, Madeline and Hannah begins her live trainings again in Trust Intuition. You will love it. Yes. <laughs> so excited. I'm constantly multitasking, <laughs> listening, listening to bits while I'm doing other stuff. There's so much stuff in there. I'm going to do it 24-7. There is so much content in Trust Intuition. So in Trust Intuition, I first originally created Trust Intuition in 2016. Over the years, it's evolved into what you see it now. It's always like the same training videos. Like I filmed like a hundred videos back then. It's, it's all still sitting there as pure gold content. Last year and this year, I'm running it as a live training. So when you join Trust Intuition, there is like so much content in there that as you can see, Madeline's like absorbing and going through it, which I'm so excited. There's also another student that's doing that as well. And it's almost like go through all the videos. So when we do the live training, you also know what we're talking about. It's like, as I always say with Trust Intuition, the more you go through the videos, you're gonna pick up something different every time, every time, you know? And as I always say, my videos, live streams long, they're long, they, you know, everything's long, but we can multitask, right? You can, I'm just sitting here on the video talking to you like this. You can have your, your AirPods in, your earphones, you can have playing on the TV, like multitask listening while you're doing the dishes, like, you know, I don't know, having a shower, um, hanging the washing out, mowing the lawn, I don't know, <laughs> like whatever, do you know what I mean? Like multitask, absorb yourself in what you want to learn. Remember, we're being imprinted all the time and maybe you don't want to be imprinted by me, like fair enough, right? But when there's people that you want to learn certain traits from you can just absorb that piece you don't have to absorb the whole person by the way 
um, and just like take that and like you, you're conscious that you're absorbing this information you're absorbing this like and it's you can use these affirmations like I'm understanding this even if you're not I'm starting to understand this pieces are starting to sink in you know like I'm listening intently I'm absorbing it you know so yeah I love it I, lo I love that you guys are doing that <laughs> so freaking awesome Mel says, yep, it's been over 18 months. Okay, perfect. This is a perfect like time for you to come back into yourself and start like rewiring into this like healthy patterning. And a ceremony ceremony is a powerful, it's an initiation, it's a portal where you step into the fullness of yourself. Like this is I'm just so much yes. <laughs> so much yes. Oh, so good. Try two decades. Yeah. So yeah, six decades. Yeah. And so this is where we get to look at ourselves, right? Um, an open heart and welcoming in. Um, healthy love again takes a lot of trust takes down bringing these walls like I said what rewatch the last two live streams to understand the depth of these walls that we're talking about and how they evolve and come from and stuff right um, you know but honestly the amount of times that I've been howling my eyes out on the kitchen floor over the years especially when my daughter was you know at her youngest um, and I was on my own which is two to three years age and all that sort of thing like I can't I can't tell you how many times but because I've allowed myself to heal that deep grief that's I call it piercing the veils grief and consistently work with mentors and dive into training courses that heal this stuff and be absorbed in it. Like I'm constantly in something since 2005. I've been in something the entire time, whether it's yoga, whether it's like whatever I've been doing, like business development, like the spiritual like evolution, like just you have to be, you know, for you don't have to do anything at the end of the day, <laughs> but I am constantly in something. Now I'm in crypto, like learning crypto right now. You know what I mean? Like it, it changes and evolves, as I could say, in trust intuition. If you get distracted learning something else, don't think that you're getting distracted because your intuition is showing you something and you come back and you're like, oh my God, I understand this now. <laughs> so important to trust intuition. <laughs> but it's so important to be around people who are living the life that you want and understanding what they did, learning from them because they're where you want to be. And while you're in there, you're going to be absorbing all those healing codes and energy and you know their thought patterns and all of those things right just by being in there let alone the work you do as well so important um, Benjamin says did you and your daughter love New Zealand yeah I, I would touch down and then I'd jump on the next flight and go um, it's somewhere I'd love to explore I know it's beautiful and my daughter does love it there she has family there thanks Nancy you're amazing Madeline says, yes, it's incredible. I can't even comprehend, comprehend yet how much there is in there. I <laughs> know there's so much. It's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's crypto. Nancy, EMDR therapy was pivotal for me. And that's the thing we need to trust what we're being called to learn, to absorb, to heal, to do all those things. Like it's so important, guys, right? All right, so I technically feel there's a part four of this live stream coming on, but it is about my relationships that are healing and, you know, what's unfolding from that. Um, I'll do that at some point when I feel called to. Uh, so if you haven't watched part one and part two, I feel betrayed by the dark. Then the second one is the feminine betrayal. Um, you know, if you get can't find those videos, just send me a message or email or something and I'll um, send you the part one, part two. This is part three. Uh, if you've got any questions, just comment below. If you think this can help somebody, please um, share it with them or send it in private message. If you don't want to share it publicly, that's fine as well. Um, Benjamin says, I'm trying to find love again because I can't trust no more. I'm trying to trust again. Yeah, and this is where breaking down on those walls and feeling safe, right? And this is all we do in trust intuition. I will do a lot more, but you know, it's a big part of it as well. But definitely understanding what I spoke about in part one and part two. Like, it's like a series. It will, like, you know, if you watch part one, then you want to start part two and it'll be like, wow, it all makes sense. So make sure you keep an eye out for those or watch those as well. You're so welcome, Penny. You're so welcome, Mel. Sending you guys so much love. Trust your intuition starts in a few weeks. So the link is on the title of this live stream. You can find it on my website at realityawareness.com. You can send me a message. You can find it on my Facebook page at Reality Awareness. I shall see you guys really soon. Keeping it real as always.